I'm debating like if I should put this eye directly on her eye and it might be kind of cool so I think I'm gonna try it. My name is Jennifer Belair Sakarian and I'm an artist, educator, and maker living in Ann Arbor, Michigan. I make art for a lot of reasons. For me it's just very like cathartic and therapeutic and uh, just a great way to release something out into the world, to be creative, to tell a story, to tell my story, and I think a collective story of something, something passionate, something about the natural world, uh, some kind of hopeful romantic space that uh, might maybe cheer people up or that it could potentially make them think in a different way or to look inward. Uh, so that's really important for me is just to be able to make things. If I'm not making art, I'm writing. If I'm not writing, I'm um, you know, making things from the garden. So I, I just have this really strong sense to be a creator and to put things out into the world that might uplift or might cause this new um, kind of pattern of thinking or inquiry or just encourage someone else to be creative along the way. To describe my work, I would say that it is a space of inquiry. Uh, it's a space for me to kind of have fun, to play, and to really ponder about what's going on in my own personal world, and sometimes the world at large. I like to work in a very intuitive and quick way, so sometimes things just kind of leap onto the page that I don't always expect. Uh, oftentimes I do use a lot of nature-based imagery because nature is at the kind of core and epicenter of me as a human being. Uh, it's something that I really love and that it brings me to a nice sense of peacefulness. And I like to make a lot of correlations between human emotions and the natural world. So a lot of times different animals, different plants, different mushrooms and things like that could act as stand-ins for like more complex human emotions. I would essentially describe my work as a stream of conscious flow of birds, of thoughts, of emotions, of memories, and essentially just uh, stories put on paper. It's really hard to choose a favorite piece from the DIA, actually. Um, the first one that comes to mind is The Postman by Vincent van Gogh. I like this one for a lot of reasons. I think it's like very quirky and has this kind of freshness to it, even though it's quite an old painting. It has like this strangeness to it. It has like a very uh, unique and airy color palette, like uh, maybe color that's not always associated with what's actually there. That's something that I find super inspirational. Today I'm going to be showing uh, kind of my mixed media approach to art making. Although I studied printmaking in school, I definitely consider myself a mixed media artist and especially within my home studio, uh, it's really great because I can pull from pretty much whatever's available. So I'll be showing you how I use collage and also how I use some of my uh, relief or lino block uh, blocks for uh, making some prints and adding some printing elements to my mixed media pieces. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started with that. So to get started with the collage, I went ahead and traced a really light outline in pencil uh, where I wanted each of my collage elements to live. I'm just going to put some newsprint down and then flip my image over and I'm actually just going to use a standard glue stick and I'm going to apply a nice even coat of the adhesive onto the back side. Once it's all nicely coated, I'm going to go ahead and carefully try to align it up to my little pencil outline that I had created. And just going to go ahead and use my fingers to press the image onto the actual paper. And you'll notice it's not 100% perfect and that's something I'm quite okay with. I often like to leave kind of traces of my intention on the art piece. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to the other piece, just a nice quick coat and then just putting that little flower and again applying pressure to make sure that it's nice and uh, stuck to the page. And same thing with this other flower piece, just going to add a nice layer of glue. Sometimes you can add more than one layer so I could let it dry and then add another one. Just depends on the quality of the glue stick. And so I'm just going to place that exactly where it should be and maybe a little bit off. That's alright too. 
So now I just have my last piece that I'm going to go ahead and do the same exact thing with and just applying that nice even coat of glue and then wrapping the collage portion of this mixed media work up and going to go ahead and move on to adding some relief printmaking elements. What I want to do next is essentially incorporate some of my relief block printing into my project. Right now I already have a couple blocks that are already carved and I think would be really cool to add to this piece, especially in some of these white areas. Uh, it's good to have negative space, right, where nothing's living, but I think there could be some interesting things that could happen to kind of bring this piece alive. And a really simple and actually quite fun way to do that is just by using <laughs> and uh, just by using the um, stamp pads. So this is not something that I was classically trained to do, but for me it's easy and it's really fun and it actually creates a really wonderful effect um, that requires little cleanup. So I'm gonna start off by just trying the blue and seeing what that looks like. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of press this in there and it's hard to see if there's ink on there so I'm going to kind of decide where do I want this <laughs> this funny eye to live and I actually think I want it right on this little petal here so I have this kind of abstract flower that's happening and then one of the petals so I'm just gonna set it down and press and lift and so now we have this super subtle uh, kind of detail and because it was blue ink like a really light blue and this is red. It almost makes like a purple color, which is kind of cool. Uh, if I use the same color on white, it would do something totally different. So let's kind of see what that looks like. So I'm just going to press it right here, use some force and a little bit of wiggle and uh, lift that up. So it almost has that purplish tint to it. And that could be just because it still has some of the red on it. But to be honest, I don't mind one bit and I actually quite like it. So I'm going to do one more. Oh yeah, so we got a nice blue that's happening. Kind of like a, a lot of concentration of color and imagery here and it's just sort of dissipating. So I'm going to maybe do a couple more. There, yeah, that looks good. Nice. Yeah, I think something really interesting is happening with this piece. Like I said, a lot of my work is super intuitive so I I don't always know what's going to happen and for me that's kind of the fun of it all. I'm debating like if I should put this eye directly on her eye and it might be kind of cool so I think I'm going to try it. Oh. oh yeah, that looks pretty cool. It looks a little funky but I'm totally fine with that. For me it's all about play and kind of exploration and seeing what can happen. Uh, and then I also have this red so I'm thinking I want to use this kind of squiggle that I made. So I'm going to try to ink this one up. You get a little messy but not too much so that's kind of <laughs> the fun of it all too. I think I'm going to have it kind of coming out of the flower up this way. I think that could be kind of interesting. I'm going to try to get it so it hits this section right here. And I'm not sure if it's going to work but let's see. Okay. Oh yeah. That looks great. I'm going to do one more. And I'm thinking this one is going to kind of travel this way. So it's going to go off the page just a little bit. And that's just a really fun little tip <laughs> to kind of get your viewer to look at how the action is moving across the page. So if everything's nice and tidy, sometimes that can be a little bit boring. So I like to have things kind of come off the page to tell the story that something else might be happening that we can't quite see. And you'll notice I got a little smudge here and that's because I have ink on my hands and honestly this happens all the time and it, it doesn't really bother me. I'm just not that type of creative person. I welcome mess. <laughs> and uh, so I'm going to do something similar here so we have kind of this motion happening. So it's going to be partially on the page and partially off the page. So, oh yeah, that looks super fun. Okay. Nice. And then from there, I think I want to add just one more eye. And I'm going to go ahead and do that in red. And see what we got. Oh, yeah. Nice. 
So I'm actually really happy with where this is going. I still have quite a, a bit of work to do to it to get it exactly where I want it to be. But for now, I feel really happy with it. And I think that's where I'm going to leave this. Uh, thank you all so much for joining me. I hope that this has been inspirational in some way or that it helps you kind of get the insight uh, into how different artists create. So thank you so much.